Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of How to Make Your Guitar Play Great in 2024. And what I want to talk with you guys about today is when it's time to change the oil on your guitar. Spoiler alert, it's not every 3,000 miles or three months, whichever comes first. So, uh, but a couple of, couple of things I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, first of all, we're in the undisclosed location here in the underground bunker uh, somewhere in, in, uh, in Colorado. Uh, but um, uh, so let me know what you guys think about that. I'll see you in the comment section. Let me know. Let me know what you think about this. Let me make sure the lighting is still good. Anyway, um, today we want to talk about oiling uh, um, necks, oiling fretboards, and when it's time to do that and what I recommend that you use when it's time. Some of it you can get at the hardware store. Some of it is, uh, um, is stuff that I want you to check out. That's a very specific product that my buddy Steve over at Maximum Guitar Works makes. None of it is lemon oil. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what uh, everybody has a fretboard. And if you have a rosewood fretboard, how about this? If you don't have a maple fretboard that has a hard finish on it, um, you will probably need to clean and oil your fretboard, whether you have a rosewood or uh, ebony or, or let's just say, I don't know, I guess you could have a maple fretboard with no hard finish on it at all, though that is not recommended. We'll get to that too. Um, why don't we show you guys, this is one of our Challenger Level 1s, and uh, something that is, and, and I'm sorry that I don't have a finished level one to show you. I actually have one right over there, but that's the reveal that I'm going to show you guys on Tuesday. Um, Ike from Flipside Music, the great American guitar store, is going to come in. That's his guitar. So we're going to reveal that on Tuesday. So I don't want to spill the beans. So I have to show this one that is ready to assemble. Uh, uh, and I apologize that I don't have a complete guitar for you. But this actually proves my point very well because... The level one instruments have an oil finished neck, okay? So this one doesn't have any oil on it at all. It's got our um, durable thin finish on the body and the necks are oil finished. And we oil the necks after the necks are glued into the guitars, after the guitar bodies are painted. It's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a whole process that we have, uh, that we've come up with. But um, we're going to talk more about, about that here as we go. Let me, uh, let me take a moment, let me grab another guitar with a rosewood fretboard so we can, uh, we can show you that too. Because the first thing we're talking about is fretboards. All right, so this is our Challenger Level 2 Ultralight that is getting shipped to Glenn as soon as we get his case in. Uh, this has a, um, a mahogany neck and a rosewood fretboard. Um, this, uh, his entire guitar body and the back of his neck has a hard finish on it. So the only thing we really need to worry about is what we're going to do to the fretboard. As you play, you're going to notice that you get grime and crud and gunk in between the strings and the frets and in where the frets meet the fretboard and, you know, kind of areas like that. Um, some guys think that there's a bunch of mojo and dead skin and crap all over their fretboard. Um, some guys don't. So if you're one of those guys, and I use the term uh, with a unisex kind of vibe, if you're a person that uh, likes to have a clean-ish or all the way clean fretboard, a couple of things that I'm going to recommend that you do and a couple of things that I'm going to recommend you don't do. Um, cleaning your fretboard is something that is easy to do. You can do that um, mechanically with the razor blade. Um, I don't recommend that you do that unless you've got like a, an old guitar with a bunch of gunk on it. And all you do is you just take a razor blade and kind of go in between. Obviously, there'd be no strings on it. You would go in between the frets lightly, lightly, lightly and just scrape uh, um, any of that gunk and mung and filth out of the, in between the frets and uh, with a razor blade and just go back and forth ever so slightly. Don't do it too, don't do it too much and don't bounce over onto the fret. You'll scratch the fret. Just kind of scrape some of that crap off there. Once you get all that off, you're going to remove oils and things like that that were been deposited by fingers. Uh, and not to mention, again, all that crap, get rid of all the crap. Once you get all that stuff off, you're going to want to condition and oil your fretboard. A word of warning, um, if you use too much oil or if you use the wrong kind of oil, it is possible, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it is possible that the oil will sink in between the fret and the fret slot and loosen the fret's connection to the fret slot. Now, if you have 
Um, if your frets are glued in, that will be mitigated to, to a certain extent, but you don't, what, you don't just want to go pour in a bunch of oil on there and then, and then let it sit for a couple days and wipe it off. You want to get something on there and then get something off of there so you're just treating the, um, the, the fretboard oil, uh, the, the fretboard wood. You don't want to treat inside the fret slots, okay? So what I have that I want you guys to use is Steve's number nine fretboard cleaner and, and lubricant. Um, this has an orangey smell. It's actually quite terrific. And um, it's, I'm not going to take a, a swig of it, but it's a, it's a food grade uh, or kind of a safe polymerizing oil and cleaner. Look at that. I got, I got crap all over Glenn's guitar. Sorry, Glenn. Um, but just a little tiny bit of this. And what you want to do is like maybe like get some on your finger or some on a rag and just put it just right on, right on the, the top of the fret. Put it on there, smear it all in good, and then and then you know get get all 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 the in between slots, and then wipe it off, dry it off good, and let it sit for a while. Um, you might discover that you have to go back later and and wipe some excess off because it might still be you know kind of uh, oily. So really get in there, like just a paper towel, um, or or don't don't worry about like you know cutting up your favorite you know uh, Ario Speedwagon T-shirt and getting in there. Although that'd be a good idea too, but a regular old paper towel would be fine, um, not because nobody likes Ario Speedwagon. Um, oh, I kid, I kid, I kid. Everybody likes Ario Speedwagon. I get it. Um, but uh, but yeah. So so th the idea though is you want to get something in there and get it uh, get it smeared into the wood and then and then get it off so it doesn't sink into the fret slot. Um, you can use, you don't have to use number nine, but I recommend that you do. If you buy a Texas Toast guitar and you're like, hey, what do I clean my fretboard with? What went on at the factory is this uh, uh, Mad Scientist Oil number nine on the fretboard. You can use, uh, I, I do not recommend tongue oil. We're going to come back to this. Um, I don't recommend like a boiled linseed oil or any of that stuff. You, you could probably get away with some of that stuff. Um, the idea though is that that stuff sinks in and it's not, it doesn't clean. It just smears a bunch of oil on crap. And we're not talking about an axe handle here that you'd like lubricate a day for a week and a week for uh, every, or every, every day for the first week and every week for the first month and every month for the first year and every other year after that. This is something that you only need to do once you start to get, you know, a, a, a collection of crap on your fretboard. Um, I would recommend that you not use um, lemon oil because it's, it doesn't stay around. It, it's, it smells nice and it looks cool for a second, uh, but it, it, it evaporates very quickly. If you can't get anything else, something like a butcher block oil, a food safe oil like that, and again, very, very lightly, that has worked very well for us in the past. Uh, the, like I said, the food grade mineral oil or butcher block oil, that's a great thing to use for your fretboard. But remember, very, very sparingly, okay? If you have a, um, if you are lucky enough to have a, um, an oil finish neck, congratulations. Oil finishes are wonderful. I love oil finish necks. Um, in fact, I love oil finish guitars. It's just that you guys don't like them. Um, I don't think you like them because when I make them, you don't buy them. So, uh, but oil finish necks are something that people really do dig. Uh, I caution you on oil finish necks. Sometimes you might think you have an oil finish neck and what you actually have is a um, very well sanded, uh, uh, sealed neck with hard finish that feels kind of like an oil finish neck. If you go put an oil on it, it's not going to hurt it, but it's not going to penetrate into the wood. It's just going to smear on and smear right off. So like for example, our 73 finish feels like an oil finish on the neck, but it is not, it is a hard finish. So you don't need to worry if you have a 73 finish, um, you don't need to worry about gopping a bunch of oil on the back of your neck. Um, it won't do anything, okay? <laughs> just just concentrate on the uh, on the fretboard. Let's put Glenn's guitar away so we don't get it scratched up. So if you have an oil finished neck on the back, there's a couple of things that I recommend that you do. One of them is not leave it raw. I know that Eddie Van Halen had a raw neck and he would change out the necks all the time and so it wasn't a big deal. Um, if you have a Challenger Level 1, uh, it does not ship with, with um, we don't ship a raw neck because that would that would suck. Um, we ship it with a neck that has a polymerizing oil finish. There's two that I recommend. The first one and the one that it leaves the, the factory with is the Mad Scientist Number no. 7 oil. It's a, a polymerizing oil. It's a hard finish. Um, 
it's, uh, uh, it, it, so it's so it's not like using tongue oil. You could use tongue oil if you wanted, um, but it's it's uh, um, it's it's almost got like a wax built into it. Okay, so you want to you want to wipe that stuff on and then and then wipe it off. And then if you need to reapply, you can. Or if you want to, um, let's say you're building a guitar and you wanna you wanna put an oil finish on it for some reason, but you don't want to put. Uh, but you think you might want to use a hard finish on it later, I recommend the number eight because it doesn't have any waxes in it, okay? It's just, it's just the, the, the orange essence oil that Steve uses in the number seven. But it leaves the factory, if you get a Challenger level one, it leaves the factory with number seven on it, which is a polymerizing oil with a wax in it. I, I, and guys, I'm not saying that I don't make any money off of the Steve thing, okay? I've been using it so long that Steve, I, this is my original bottle that he gave me a long, long time ago, and he just hand wrote on there what it is. So I've been using uh, Steve's oils for a long, long time now, and you should too. They're, they're excellent. Link in the description below to uh, Steve's oil. Um, the, uh, the idea though, if you're, uh, say, let's say you're, uh, so, okay, let's say you got a Challenger level one, you're like, how do I keep up with my, uh, my neck? What you would probably want to do is don't worry about sanding it, don't worry about scuffing it back. Whatever you do, don't use steel wool on it. Um, take a dry paper towel or your REO Speedwagon shirt and wipe the back of the neck. Get as much crap off of it as you can. If you've got like a bunch of green junk growing out of the neck, okay, then you might want to scratch it up a little bit, abrade it a teeny tiny bit with like 400 grit sandpaper or the, the, the finest scotch bright you can get, not the white stuff, maybe the gray stuff. Just get kind of get rid of that, that, uh, that, that funk that's on the back and then go ahead and reapply your... Um, your number seven oil, polymerizing oil, and hard wax. Okay, uh, but if you if you don't have a bunch of uh, gype on the back of your neck, you can just go right to. I'm gonna just put another layer of this on. I don't know, once a year, once every six. You can you, you can kind of get an idea and tell. Um, uh, wipe it on, wipe it off, wax on, wax off. Okay, you got it. We got it. Cool. It's awesome. Uh, let's say you don't have access to uh, Steve's stuff or you don't have a Challenger Level 1 and my question would be, well, you can get access to Steve's oils and you can, uh, you can absolutely get your own Challenger Level 1, but let's say you don't want to use that stuff because you are a rebel. I got it. Happy Meal for you. Okay. One of the things that you can use the old school, and I, I'm, okay, hold on. <laughs> the old school way is, is tongue oil, and I've been using tongue oil on, on guitars for a long, long time. Another product that's great is the Sam Maloof polymerizing oil and wax um, uh, uh, and liquid wax two-step oil process. That's terrific for necks. Um, it's almost as good as, as Steve's number seven stuff. It's, it, I mean, Sam Maloof um, built furniture that's in the White House, so you pretty much know that Sam Maloof knew what he was up to. Um, but, uh, and, and I don't even know where you can get that anymore. I think you could used to get it at Rockler and some other places. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, but it's just as easy to get Steve's stuff. But if you don't, if you want a buck tradition, fine. Um, you can also consider a paste finishing wax if you have like a tongue oil. That's, a tongue oil is not a polymerizing oil, so you wipe it on there and it's just going to be oil. Okay, so if you do that, you can go back with, uh, with just some paste wax. You can even use beeswax as, as a whole finish on the back of your neck provided you don't have anything on there uh, to begin with. If you want to just go to a wax finish, you're going to need to um, uh, remove all the old crap and then and follow the manufacturer's instructions. But um, you can, uh, there, there's lots of different stuff. A lot of guys use that uh, True Oil, that's gunstock oil. It's kind of shiny. It's, it's cool and it works, um, but it's made for gunstocks. It's not made for guitar necks. Um, guitar necks get a lot more play uh, you get a lot more of this kind of action on a guitar neck than you do a rifle stock. You know, uh, I, have, I have a lot of rifles and I don't spend hours and hours and hours uh, holding my rifle by the stock like this and, and grinding, uh, you know, palm grease into it. So uh, you, you don't need to use uh, a true oil, although that is a product that people do use. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying it's for guns. Um, uh, another another thing that you can do, which we're not going to get into, is French polish and all of the um, oils and, and waxes and this, that, and the others associated with French polish. Guys, if I never, ever, ever have to do another French polish in my life, I can die a happy man. That's just me. I know a lot of you guys. I Let me know in the comment section all the great fun you've had doing French polish. And I tell you what, next time somebody says I want a French polish, I'll send it to you and you can do it since you love it so much. 
Cool? Okay. So anyway, that is what I recommend that you guys use. Whoops, I just dropped my uh, fretboard uh, uh, cleaner and lubricant. The, um, the, the Maximum Guitar Works, Mad Scientist finishes stuff. Uh, get you some of this uh, number seven and get you some of the number nine fretboard cleaner. If you have a Challenger level one, that's the one to get, okay? That will, uh, number seven for the back of the neck, number nine for the fretboard. Key point to remember is don't just pour it on there and let it sit. Uh, you want to you want to get it on, get it on sparingly. Wipe it off. Uh, keep your oil from sinking down into your fret slots. Uh, that can that can go really really bad if you have a a, a a guitar that somebody else made that the frets aren't glued in, or or an old guitar uh, that you want to condition the fretboard. Um, you want to you want to make sure that you don't let oil sink into there because you can you can damage the integrity you can compromise the integrity of the fret slot and we don't want that okay uh, my friend Mark who's a classical guitar builder will would would come over and punch me in the gut if I said yeah just go ahead and don't worry about getting in the fret slots because he knows all too well what can happen so sparingly on the fretboard don't mess around with um, ah you almost got me don't mess around with uh, with lemon oil it doesn't really do anything. Um, it looks cool for a little while. If you can't get Steve's uh, number nine, um, or they're sold out or something, and you just got to do something immediately, like I said, uh, 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 food grade mineral oil, uh, cutting board oil, something like that would be great. So, guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hope you're enjoying these um, these quick videos about how to make your guitar play great in 2024. If you don't have a Challenger Level One, what's the matter with you? You can have something nice like this guy. This one's super light too. All right, gang. Uh, so until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that uh, if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you in a few days. We've got a cool reveal coming up of a guitar not unlike this, only a different color. And Ike from Flipside Music is going to be here. Thanks to Steve from Maximum Guitar Works. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all my Patreon viewers. Thanks to all my YouTube supporters. Thanks to everybody who watches these things and helps me uh, grow my channel. Um, I hope we get to 40,000 by the time you see this. You never know, but we're, we're closing in on 40,000 subscribers at the time of this recording and maybe I'll do a quick um, quick promotional thing for something uh, uh, on the website. I haven't figured it out yet, but Joy's got some big plans. So guys, thanks for watching. Have a great week. We'll see everybody next time. I